Good evening, fans, and welcome to another exciting Channel 22 sports presentation. I'm Rufus Washington, joined as always by my partner, Michael Kennedy. We are here at Losinger High School as the Losinger Olympians play host to the Peninsula High Panthers in a Bay League contest tonight. Rufus, it's a battle for first place. We have a three-way tie with Losinger, Peninsula, and Redondo. Both of these teams were undefeated going into Friday night's play. Redondo upsets Lusinger in overtime, and West Torrance knocks off Peninsula in double overtime. So all three teams stand in first place at a record of three and one. Three and one in league, and coach knows that it's going to take a couple of more wins to earn a playoff position. to earn a playoff position for the Olympians short of winning the, the uh, league title. Peninsula Panthers overall with a record of 13 and six, and the Lucifer Olympians with a record of eight and 10. Key players to watch for Peninsula, Bill Clark, 6'5", junior, averaging 20 points a game. And John Reed, a 6'6", sophomore, averaging 17 points a game. Tonight's officials are Greg McMullen and Ron Blake as the Olympians are being introduced. Of course, we have a Little extra sound effect with us tonight, but you see the Olympian lineup coming out. This promises to be a very good Bay League contest, so Michael, it's, we're getting into the heat of the season now. Well, both of the coaches are still upset about losing in overtime on Friday night. I talked with both of them. Musinger had a six point lead with less than a minute to go. That game ended up in overtime. They lost 63-60. Jim Quick, the head coach for Peninsula, was sent into double overtime. Bill Clark hit a 30-footer to help them scrape by and get to that second overtime, but they lost to West Torrance by a score of 90 to 80. Clark had 27 and Reed had 23 points, as you see Coach Quick now in his third year with head coaching duties of the Panthers. He had been an assistant to Mike Boyd for several years. Now Coach Boyd is over at Palos Verdes High. So that sets the scene here from Lusinger. A battle for first place. Redondo is at Maricosta tonight, and we've got Lusinger and the Panthers at three and one. Well, this is the fun part of the season, Michael, as I said, because these teams certainly know what's at stake. These are two teams that are still in the thick of a playoff run. But boy, every, every loss really you know, brings the sun down just a little bit farther on your season. And one more note, Peninsula defeated Redondo in overtime, 76-65, outscoring them 18-7 in the overtime period. So Peninsula won the opening tap, a near steal there by Chris Jackson, but it went off the official, and because Jackson was the last player to have control of the ball, that means it'll go back over to the Panthers of Peninsula. Well, I tried to keep it in play because it rolled under our table and I uh, got a foot on it. The challenge for the Olympians is that the Panthers start a very large lineup. Talk to Coach Morris before the game. Their strategy is going to be to press this Panther team full court. He thinks that their ball handling, because they have so much height, is going to be somewhat suspect. And there we see the first evidence of it. Against the pressure, we're going to have a foul on that play, which will send the Olympians to the line. Going to the line to shoot two will be Roy Walker. Well, talking about that Panther size, Bill Clark is a 6'5 junior. John Reed is a 6'6 sophomore. And Anna Quanzi is a 6'5 senior as a walker goes to the free throw line. Averaging four points on the season. He had four against Redondo in that loss in overtime Friday evening. 
Still scoreless early in first quarter action. And Walker gets the Olympians on the board first with the free throw, his second attempt coming up. So Walker converts a pair, and that gives the Olympians the early 2-0 lead. Olympian pressure defense getting a hand on the ball, can't come away with it. However, they control the rebound, and now they're pushing. Here's Westbrook, pushing up. Westbrook goes to the middle, loses the handle, but tips it over to Walker. Walker's jumper doesn't go. Olympians come away with it. So Olympians being very aggressive in the early going on the board, even though they're outsized. Well, against Redondo, their full court press gave Redondo havoc in the opening minutes, caused uh, several turnovers, and they took an early five to nothing lead before Redondo got on the board. And here's a foul as Tolliver will go to the line to shoot a couple. It'll send Tolliver to the line to shoot two. Nearly had a three-point opportunity, couldn't get it to go, though. They call the foul on John Reed. The starting lineup of Peninsula, which is Potter, Clark, Reed, Peterson, and Anna Quanze. They come in at 6'5", 6'1", 6'6", another 6'5", and a shorty at 5'9". Again, Reed averaging 17 points and nine rebounds, and Clark averaging 20 points and six rebounds of the Two scores that'll have to get shut down by this tenacious Olympian defense. Free throws are good. So, in the early going, the Olympians winning courtesy of four free throws. Nearly another turnover, and it is. Olympians may have gotten away with a foul there, but they forced a turnover, and we've got a minute three gone in the first quarter, and the Olympians lead four to nothing. Westbrook over on the left wing, dribbles now to the middle, penetrates then dishes. The shot put up from the outside by D'Angelo Johnson doesn't go, but it touches uh, something above the rim, which is an automatic change of possession. Hit the support, and out of bounds to Peninsula. Full court pressure defense being applied by the Olympians. As I said, Coach Morris indicated they would use this strategy throughout the game. Now we're gonna have a foul call against the Olympians and that foul is gonna go on D'Angelo Johnson. Getting the ball inside and putting it up is Bill Clark. Clark, 6'5", 190-pound junior. Shot from the outside by Jackson doesn't go, but the Olympians control the rebound. Peninsula still in that 2-3 zone. They don't really extend it, though, to the outside of the three-point line like some teams will do. They'll stale back right at the three-point circle. Shot put up, doesn't go for Westbrook. Rebound comes off. They push it up over the left side. Give it off to Peterson. Peterson shot no good. And fighting for the rebound is Walker. Walker with it. Walker sees a hole, then gives a nice pass off underneath to Jamel Tolliver. Tolliver goes up and he's fouled on the play. He's gonna go to the line to shoot too. Our early score, four to two. Olympians first substitute coming on. That's David Kane coming on for Westbrook. Against Redondo, Reggie Morris substituted his entire bench in the first five minutes of the first quarter. I mean, he was bringing them in a mass substitution. And maybe he had an inkling that there's gonna be a battle of attrition and go into overtime. But by halftime, everybody had equal amount of playing time. He used everybody in and out, in and out the whole game. 
And I think you can expect to see something similar this game if they go with the pressure offense, as pressure defense, I should say, as the ball heads in our direction. Good hands, huh? I one-handed well, it. Yeah, once again. We, Put me at that three-point line, baby. Michael works his way into the game. <laughs> Pass underneath, gets away from the Olympians, intended for Tolliver from Walker. Right now, they're just not patient enough against that zone. You know, they think they see an opening through the middle. It's really not there because they smother the ball or the uh, outside defenders get a hand on it. The 6'5 White breaks the pressure. Now gives it off to the far side for a three-pointer by Chuck and Aquanze. And Aquanze is 6'5, 185-pound senior. Olympians respond. So now our score is 6-5 with four and a half left here in the first quarter. There's a double team in the corner, and now they're looking for a turnover. Can't quite force it. Now they're chasing down. And this time they do force a turnover. And a slam dunk for Jamel Tolliver. Well, they got away with the first one, but the second one, that dangerous cross-court pass, resulted in a steal and a big slam, and that brings the crowd to their feet. We're going to have an offensive foul. Charged against the uh, Panthers. It's on and Dave Peterson, his second. Three team fouls. And that, and that forces Jim Quick to call a quick timeout here with 4.13 left in the first quarter. A score of losing your Olympians, leading the Panthers of Peninsula by a margin of eight to five on the Lawndale Hawthorne Community Cable Channel 22 Network. Coaches talk about handling that press over and over and they drill their teams in practice. But basically what happened was Potter in the back court made that cross-court pass. The intended receiver has got to come and meet the ball. It doesn't matter whether or not he's in the back court or the front court. He's got to come to the ball. He can't wait for the ball to come to him. And that's where the Olympians cut across, made the interception, takes off for the dunk. For exactly Tolliver. right. They, and that's a part of the defense that they run where you anticipate the diagonal pass because you take the sideline away, which means, quite frankly, there's only one logical direction for the pass to go, and they have a guy sitting in the passing lane. So it's a low-scoring affair at the halfway point of the first quarter. Kane with the handle out top, number 55. David Kane is his name, gives it all. Yeah, we want to apologize for mispronouncing his name. Up and in. Connie making his presence known and felt right away. There you see the Olympian full court pressure. He came off the bench against Redondo for seven points. He's a big asset for Reggie Morris. Causing some problems. That shot put up is short. Shot was by Peterson. And nice passing there by the Olympians as they set up John Thomas for the basket. Excellent ball movement on the break. Another timeout. The other thing that we've noticed, even though we talked about the size for a Peninsula, they're not getting any offensive rebounds or any putbacks at all. They get one shot, the Olympians are there, take the rebound and run the break every time. They've got the size, but they're out of position on the missed shots. They certainly are. This, this Palos Verdes Peninsula team with a 13 and six record overall, having secured a playoff spot essentially, and now they're playing for seeding as much as anything else. Losing are still in need of some wins or to capture one of the top three spots in league play outright. One thing Coach Quick is not happy about was the Torrance Schools a week ago played their regular games on Friday night and then played the winners in a tournament on Saturday. So they really 
restructured the entire schedule so that this week they have a bye tonight and he's got to meet South Torrance on Friday that's had a week to prepare since last Friday night's game. He didn't think it was fair also for Redondo. Redondo will play West on Friday. They're playing Maricosta tonight and West has got the week off. Wow. So that's one thing that I'm sure the coaches are going to bring up. If they're going to play a tournament, they're going to have to schedule it at another part of the season because it's unfair to the teams who are playing on a regular Tuesday, Friday basis to have to. Kanye again with a three-pointer. And you're exactly right, because most tournament play should, in fact, be taken care of in, in, in the preseason. So Kanye hits another three, and it's a big 11-point lead. at 16 to five. Well, we, we've known all season, Michael, that this uh, losing your record has always been deceptive. Even when they had the, the ton of losses early in the season, their overall record right now at eight and 10. Yeah, well, they had the two big tournaments in Newport Harbor and Las Vegas. But they gained some experience. And it's really starting to show here at first place in league play. Jackson puts up a three. His three doesn't go. But they come down with it, and Tolliver puts in the follow in the key. So losing her right now, being very dominant over this Panther team, and it's coming courtesy of their press. So Connie with six points, and Tolliver with six of the leading scores in this 13-point advantage. Foul against the Olympians. However, they steal the inbounds pass. Jackson pushes it up, gives it over to Johnson. On the floor along with Kane, John Thomas. Kane again with a three. Three for three and nine points. And Kane is not even the Olympians. Reed gets away with a push off against Jackson. Three and again, they're getting there. one shot and out. And a Kwanzaa with the attempt. Wow. And Tolliver got whacked in the face on the rebound. I think he's losing some blood there. Of course, he reaches up to put it on his jersey if he is, in fact, bleeding from the nose, which will create yet another problem because. and eight and 10 on the year. They have a one and three record. Santa Monica's undefeated at four and zero oh in first place. And then in the Pioneer League of Lawndale at one and three. Gives you an idea how the teams here, Hawthorne, Lawndale, and Lusinger are doing in their respective leagues. Johnson with the handle. Johnson attacks the basket, gets held on the play. They're not going to count the bat. Follow as he was wrapped up and still managed to throw it in from about 15 feet right of the goal. So it'll be ball out of bounds. Attempting to avoid the five second count, the Olympians turn it over. However, Kane has it on the steal. Kane attacks the basket. Connie goes up, doesn't get it to go. Westbrook in the middle there. A vision obscured for a moment by the official. That's the easiest shot that he had all night. Right. <laughs> he comes up short. Wow, that three-pointer put up from way outside by Chris Jackson. Way beyond doesn't the NBA go. range. White brings it down. White charges. No call made against him, though. Oh, they're going to let him play. Johnson. Gives it over to Westbrook. And White fouls on the play. I do believe they're going to call it against White. We've got five team fouls on the Panthers. That'll be their sixth. Well, John Clark, Reed is scoreless. Say. Bill Clark with just two points. Right, I, and I kept saying White, and I meant to say Bill Clark. Clark is their leading scorer. Clark with 284 points on the season. Yeah, Clark averages 20 points a game and six rebounds. Yeah. 
23 on the shot clock, 34 on the game Conley clock. Conley goes inside and scores it. So the Olympians have come with a secret weapon. You know, all these teams scout each other and they know their key personnel. And when you talk about the Olympians, clearly anybody scouting them talks about Jackson, Westbrook, maybe even Tolliver a little bit, and Walker. But you won't hear David Kane's name come up when you're talking about the key offensive threats. Well, Kane has, by my count, 11 points He's got now. 11 and a quarter. Make it a, make it a dozen. He's got a career night in the first quarter. Kane is six foot, 165 pounds senior. Out on the defense, puts a hand in the face. It's an air ball by Peninsula. Anna Kwanze gets down inside, can't get it to go. Rebound taken by Reed. And that is the first, second effort that they got on a putback. Wow, should have been a foul call there. Olympians don't get it. And they will end the first quarter leading by a score of 24-7 on Lawndale's Community Cable Channel 22 as we watch this exciting Bay League matchup. Peninsula looks as if they've been sleepwalking through this first quarter, Rufus. They got down early, couldn't handle the press, got one shot and out, and the Olympians showing no hangover from their overtime loss to Redondo. They came out with a lot of spirit, press, took advantage of the turnovers. Connie comes off the bench, gets 12 in a quarter, and they are rolling. And I know that our fans of Channel 22 Sports will recall that in our contest last Friday night, the Lawndale team, or was it Hawthorne? No, it was Hawthorne, uh, went up by 17 over Inglewood. And of course, Patrick Roy's team came back to, to win by seven. This is a losing team, though. I don't think you'll likely see them foul on the inside, no call. Or at least David Kane thought it was a foul. Again, loser comes away with the steal. Kane looking to attempt. Sides to pull it out, kicks it out to the perimeter to Freeman. Oh, nice inside look. I should have said Patrick Cleveland. He kicked it out. So Luzner doing a lot of passes, maybe one pass too many for their own good on that one. And Richie Morris wants to make a substitution, and he couldn't get him to the scorer's table in time. Oh, what a great block. Cleveland with the handle, gives it off to Kane. Kane steps up for the three-pointer. Doesn't get that one to go. And let's see, we may have a goal 10. It's gonna be no, Walker get... over the back. What it appears. Well, he's got to walk over the back. I'll tell you, I don't think we had the advantage of instant replay, but it's certainly also the ball was touched on the rim, and that's what I thought the call was going to be. Whether it was offensive or defensive, I wasn't sure, but instead they go with the foul on Walker. Seventeen so, fouls on Peninsula, five team fouls on the Olympians. Yeah. And another near steal by the Olympians. And that time they do make the steal as Kane steps right in the passing line. Cleveland puts the shot up, can't get it to go. And flying in from the outside, it's going to be a foul on the Olympians. Well, Luzinger may not have the size, but when the shot goes up, you're right. They come flying to the boards. No doubt about it. There's Reggie Morris in his third year. They give that foul to Westbrook. Again, losing it with the pressure defense. Wow, this defense is forcing Peninsula into all sorts of turnovers. Yeah, Redondo played like that through the first five minutes. 
But uh, once they got settled down, they have an excellent point guard in Alex Tucker. They didn't have as many problems as we see here from the Panthers. Johnson, Cleveland, and Westbrook. That shot put up from the outside. Coming down with the rebound was Tolliver. Couldn't get it to go. Loose ball, they fight for it. Let's see, where's the call going to go? Looks like this will go against Peninsula. And if that's on Clark, that may be Clark's third. Okay, the board puts it at two. Well, at any rate, I think if it's two, it may force him out of the game here. Because we still got a lot of time left in the second quarter. And it's one and one now in the bonus on eight team fouls. So they officially have Clark with two. We're in second quarter action, still scoreless. We ended the first at 24-7, and that's where we are now. And that is until Chuck Anaquanze scores a basket for the Panthers. And now Jackson on the drive to the basket. Draws a clear control. And a And that forces Coach Reggie Morris into a timeout as our score is 24-9 in favor of the Olympians on Hawthorne Lawndale's Community Cable Channel 22. Only two points scored here in a minute and 49 seconds into the second quarter. And Reggie Morris is giving little pointers on that three-point shot to his uh, perimeter shooters. Because right now they're 0 for 3 from the outside. And they want to let Peninsula back in the game with those putbacks like we saw from Anna Quincy. Well, wow. That's a 30. I got to tell you, Peninsula's burning a lot of timeouts. That's their third here in the first half. If I'm not mistaken, by rule, you only get three fulls and a couple of 20s. Not able to make the inbounds pass on full court pressure. And Potter decides to take a timeout. So. Next question is, and we of course will be back here on Friday night as the Olympians will host the Mustangs of Miracosta, who will be out seeking revenge for a defeat a couple of weeks ago when Losinger went over to Miracosta and came out of there with a win. Yeah, that was a surprise to everybody to go on the road and win their first Bay League game. A lot of pressure again. Olympians come away with it. They run the break. Boy. Clark makes a spectacular block, but nobody's there to help him out and get the rebound. So the Olympians score a quick basket. And now the pressure defense forces a turnover by Peninsula. Johnson gives it off to Walker. Now Walker the Panthers have gone from the zone fast. to a man for man. Let's see if that helps. He gives it over to Jackson. He got a mismatch here with Clark trying to guard uh, Chris Jackson. Kane from the outside. Kane with a three. David Kane with his 15th point here in the first half. There's a double team. They barely get across midcourt. Boy, that's a real touch foul call there on Chris Jackson. That's Jackson's second. If I'm not mistaken, from here, 
difficult to see. That's three on Jackson, as I thought. Shot put up by Reed, doesn't go. And now, now we got Anna Kwanze, I believe it was, getting a little heated. He and Anna Kwanze and Roy Walker getting into it a little bit. But the official, and I know our officials for the night's contest are Ron Blake, Blake and Greg McMullen. I'm not sure who, was, who which one was the official who stepped in. That's Greg McMullen's right here. Okay. And I think it was uh, Ron Blake. Blake who made the call. And Coach Quick very judiciously takes Anna Kwanze out of the game, at least for a moment, substitutes Eric Peterson for him. And away from my camera, as we have at the line, shooting the one and one was Walker, who missed the front end. Eric Peterson's more uh, noticeable, more recognizable as their uh, tailback on their football team that went to the CIF championships. We have a foul called on the floor. Very that good running back. Looks like. Looks like they called out and against Potter. Peninsula now in the double bonus as D'Angelo Johnson sizes up his shot. He has 10 seconds to get it done. For you youngsters out there who are wondering how long can you stand there before re releasing the ball. Once the official gives you possession of the ball at the free throw line, you've got 10 seconds in which to release the shot. Or you lose the opportunity. In case you wonder, do you lose just the one shot? No, you lose both shots because you violated. Oh, he is taking his time. Take a deep breath now, Chris, or uh, D'Angelo. <laughs> And he makes a pair. So that makes our score now 31-9. Clark pushing it up. Clark pushes off a little bit. And they're getting an Olympian foul. Looks like they're gonna get Kane with the foul, but let's see. And that's what it is. A little over three minutes gone. Just two points to Peninsula here in the second quarter. And the Olympians were a bit slow to get on track, but they've scored seven in the last two minutes. Clark's free throw up and in. Ball knocked out of bounds by the Panthers. Looked like John Barron, or Barron, got a hand on it. <laughs> Nearly goes into the backcourt, but uh, excellent save there by Johnson. Now John Thomas and Kane on the floor with them, along with Ryan McNichols. McNichols with the handles. This is his first opportunity of the night. He brings a little bulk and size in there. Five on the shot clock. And we're gonna have a, gonna have a shot clock violation, even though it went out of Peninsula. Correct call by the official, the clock expired. Well, Reggie Morris had the Olympians against Redondo spread the court and run clock in the last uh, just under two minutes. And uh, from my viewpoint, I felt that that uh, helped get Redondo back wow. in the game. Because they weren't able to get a shot. They ran it down within 15 seconds before they even looked for a shot. There's one of the few open looks. Clark puts it up and in. 
And of course, you can expect that Clark will get it going sooner or later. Again, their leading scorer with 284 on the season. He averages 20, he's got seven now, seven of the 14. And our first alternating possession call of the game. Clark is among their leaders in just about every category, John. Scoring, three-point field goals, block shots, and even, even assists and steals. And obviously in rebounds, John Reed is their leading rebounder, but Clark is second behind him. Olympians have a little trouble getting it in, but they finally do get it off to Johnson. Johnson has his isolated on his man 101, but he picks up his dribble, gives it over to John Thomas. Now to Patrick Cleveland, underneath. Wow, that one doesn't go for Jamel Tolliver. And Clark now brings it up, and referee calls a palming violation against Clark on the plate. And that's one of those point of emphasis calls, Michael, that, that, that the National Federation has asked officials to take a close look at way too much palming at this level. Well, they're only gonna call it if they feel he's gonna take advantage. And that's really what the rule was put in there to carry the ball and take advantage to get by somebody. You know, everybody now dribbles the ball in that pattern because they have a dot correctly how to dribble it on top. Right. They just started in the grade school and junior high school, and that's the way they've always done it. Well, it also is the other place it starts from is when you see Allen Iverson do it every weekend and some of the other NBA guys, there's a trickle-down effect as well. And these guys start seeing that, and you're right, they pick it up at a very early age. Good man defense. Connie with the steal. Connie showing its amazing speed. Connie foul from behind by Clark. Foolish foul by Clark. Now that definitely is the third one on Clark, and that's going to send him to the bench for sure for the balance of the first half. Now we got 231 left with the Olympians still holding on to a 17 point lead. They try to make a substitution. Coach Quick uh, sent the substitute, I think it's Peterson, down to the scorer's table. But uh, he came in too early before the officials waved him in. Well, what they've been, what, what both teams have been guilty of, and particularly Peninsula throughout the contest, Michael, has been when substitutes are coming on the floor, I mean, they're just walking on and off. And again, these players at this level should know and they certainly have to be told by their coaches that you don't come on the floor until you're beckoned by the official. And for this particular crew, and every crew has their idiosyncrasy, and this is one of theirs, and it's a proper one, uh, because you can't have guys walking on the floor uh, without being on the floor officially. If you take a look at number 21, you'll see sim similarities. He's right here behind the shooter. That's Nate Carroll. Pete Carroll, the coach at USC, that's his son. He plays football and basketball at Peninsula. Is that right? So. We've got a minor celebrity in the house, and Dad wouldn't be proud of that one because he didn't defend that, that possession too well against the pressure defense of the Cougars. He's an excellent defensive back, led the team in interceptions this year. For another deuce for the Olympians. And they now lead by their largest margin of the game, and that's 21. Gonna get a foul call and score the basket. Free throw is up, comes off by John Reed. Goes out of bounds, but they're gonna say it's Olympian basketball. Hey. 
coming back on the floor, Jerome Potter. Wow, nice inside look put up and in by Roy Walker. Shot put up and let's look at the call. Apparently wave it off as it's a player control foul against Peterson. Now the defensive player had position right in front of the hoop. And Peterson charged down the lane, collided, banked it in. He'll take away the basket. Still remains 20 point, 21 point lead for the Olympians. And once again, the Olympians, by now you know sporting new uniforms gifted to them by the former Olympian. Dorel Wright in the celebration we covered right here on Lawndale's Community Cable Channel 22 a couple of weeks ago. Well, that was a fantastic evening. Walker with it down the paint, gives it off. That shot put up by Johnson, it doesn't go. And Olympians come down, they get a hand on it, and again they force yet another turnover. So I score once again the biggest margin of the game, 21 for the Olympians. Kanye about ready to pull the trigger again. He's got 15 already in the first half. Spin move, they're gonna get a travel on that, perhaps. But no, they, they call the foul first. He was ready to go down to the other end and play defense. So, so we're in the double bonus. Both uh, teams have 10 team fouls. It's got to be the lowest scoring half for Peninsula this season. Looking back at uh, their scores, as we mentioned, against Redondo in an overtime, they outscored them 18 to 7 in a four wow. minute overtime. Wow. Here they only have 16 points in basically. 15 minutes. Exactly. <laughs> so, can't convert either free throw. Peninsula comes away with the rebound. For one, a few times they break the press. That's Carroll with the handles. Carroll finally gets it off to Potter. Potter under extreme pressure, as have all of the Panthers been throughout the night. Excellent defensive position there by Kanye for you youngsters watching it. That's what you do, you get set, get down low. Trying to draw the charge was Donnell Beverly. Being on the shot clock, 20, 35 on the game clock. Beverly with it, gives it over to Kanye. Kanye over to Johnson, Johnson shot in the lane, draws a lot of iron, doesn't go. Our view obscured by the referee, one of the few people that we can't ask to move out of our way. Well, now the shot clock is off with 15 left in the half. So, with a 19 point lead, the Olympians look to hold it for one, some contact. There's the penetration in the paint shot, put up and in by John Thomas with two seconds left. And that shot's up, but it doesn't go. And so the Olympians go to the locker room with a 21-point lead, which they held consistently throughout the second quarter. At one point, they led 35-14, and they go into the locker room leading 39-18, Michael. They had a 17-point lead at the end of the first quarter. Just sagged a little midway through the second period and then had a burst at the end and pulled away to build it up to 21. Connie in the first uh, quarter with 12 points ends up with 15 and a half. That's got to be his season high in just 16 minutes of basketball. 
Peninsula wow. really could not get Clark or Reed untracked, and they're their leading scorers combined for 37 points a game. Right and now at halftime, and you're they've right. got 11. And when you come in and Kane scores 15 from a source that you don't expect, you expect Chris Jackson or so to go off 15 or Russell Westbrook. So that has really put Peninsula in a pickle. They've got eight minutes to figure it out as they trail by 21 on Lawndale's Community Cable Channel 22. So as we go to our halftime break, once again, the score, Losinger 39, Peninsula 18. We'll be back for second half action fans. I got us some uh, reinforcements here. All right, here. fans, we are back for a second half action. As we open the second half, the Olympians will open with possession in front of our broadcast position. Westbrook gives it over to Johnson. Joined here to start the second half along with Jackson. Now we're going to have a blocking foul. Boy, that's a huge fourth foul called on Bill Clark in the first eight seconds, Michael, of the third quarter, and that will take him out of the, out of the rest of this quarter. Yeah, and a quick look at the bench as uh, Jim Quick looks down and brings in Eric Peterson. Eric Peterson, a 6'1 senior, replacing Bill Clark, the leading scorer for the Panthers, a 6'5 junior averaging 20 points a game. And that does a couple of things for the Olympians, one of which is it gets the best player for Peninsula out of the ball game for the whole period. And the Olympians immediately attack the basket. Don't get the conversion there, but they come down with the offensive rebound. That was D'Angelo Johnson who attacked. Now Westbrook decides he'll give it off inside, gets knocked away, but Westbrook goes up. Can't get it to go, had a great look at it. He's not even sure how he missed that one. And now, wow, Chris Jackson is going to pick up a foul. And that's at least. Well, Unofficially, I have him with four. Made, four. That's four on Jackson. Coach Reggie Morris right now looking like he's going to let him play with that fourth foul. Boy, it's real apparent. They can see the scoreboard. Now, yeah. Peterson shoots an air ball at the free throw line. He must have the jitters. Then they toss him the ball, and to relax, he's doing squats, and the ball bounces off his back and rolls to midcourt. <laughs> and Coach Morris does substitute for him. Uh, for Jackson, that is, and brings David Kane back. Also gives us the opportunity to tell you that in today's LA Times, very complimentary story on former losing Olympian coach Travis Showalter and the program that he's got out in Marino Valley at Rancho Verde High School. One of the best teams out in the Inland Empire. Wow, excellent block inside. On second effort, they're going to get a foul on the Olympians. The block was by Roy Walker. But they give, and they give the foul to Walker. And that I was, thought they were going to call a jump ball because he came right on top of it. Now Walker's going to pick up back to back fouls. That'll be his third. Now three team fouls on the Olympians. Coach Morris having a couple of choice words for Greg McMullen. <laughs> Official that free throw by Anna Kwanze. No good. Anna Kwanze got into a little bit of a scuffle there in the first half. So, a little bit of pressure. Wow. Peninsula comes out of the locker room, decides 
What's good for the goose is good for the gander as they turn and put a little pressure on the Olympians and force a turnover. Of course, they're only 19 points down, so they've got a huge mountain to climb. And now we're gonna score a basket on the inside, and they're gonna give the foul to John Thomas. Dana Kwanzi looking for a three-point play. And Coach Reggie Morris asks for a timeout on Londell's Community Cable Channel 22 as the 21-point Olympian lead has been cut to 17 here in the early going. We're only a minute 15 in, and they've been outscored four to nothing. But more importantly, even with Clark, the big man for Peninsula out, the Olympians here have 14 fouls in the first minute and 15 seconds of the second half, Michael. Well, they're going to look to Anna Kwanzi in deep. And uh, at 6'5", the senior is going to be their go-to man right now. It's going to be Anna Kwanzi and Reed. And he goes back to look for a three-point play. Also, a nice story of the Daily Breeze on North Torrance. Luke Duperon, the uh, son of Gary Duperon, the head coach. I've known him since he was about eight years old. He was a ball boy over there. Anna Kwanzi completes a three-point play. It gives him nine points in the game. And so, thus far, wow, now we're going to get a foul call. Five nothing. They tried to chip away in a minute and 24 seconds. We get a foul call against uh, Peninsula on that play. We'll send the ball out of bounds to the Olympians. I'll call you back. Oops. It's Open. the uh, third personal on Potter, their point guard. So the Olympians with possession. It's time to look inside. Attacking the basket was Donnell Beverly. And looked like he was fouled on the drive. We'll see if that sends Beverly to the line. And it does. So Beverly at the line to shoot a pair. Early, early third quarter action. Now we've got Anna Kwanzi with four personal fouls. Um, so. so Anna Kwanzi comes out of the lineup. There's two big men, Clark down with four, Anna Kwanzi down with four. They're gonna struggle now for three Well, they're rebounds. certainly gonna struggle, and they, someone will either have to stand up or they're going to need to fight. They're going to need to risk one of those two. Swing it across court to John Barron. That shot put up from three point range by Peterson doesn't go. Kane pushes it back to Kane. Kane layup is blocked on the inside. Eric Peterson at 6 1 goes up skies to block that. Peterson and Potter outside. Now they give it off to Byron. Byron's shot doesn't go. Now they're starting to run. Here's a dish over in the corner. Doesn't go. There was contact. Could have had a foul call. Cleveland with the three-point attempt. Can't get it to go. Well, the Olympians had a three-on-two break. They went for the three-pointer. Bounce pass on the uh, weak side, and they got an easy layup from the left uh, wing. That three-pointer put up and in by Peterson. Peterson think, now with five. I think they give the three the wrong way. In fact, I know it's got to be the wrong there, way. They but. just made the change. It's going to be 40-26. Which makes it a 14-point lead. Olympians have been outscored 8-1 to one here in the third quarter. In spite of the fact 
that Clark is on the bench. Another inside layup miss for the Olympians. Coach Morris, I can assure you, having some concern right now. And even more, if that shot goes, wow, can't get it to drop. Three-pointer put up by Potter. That drew a lot of iron, Michael. Jerome Potter wide open for a three from about 21 feet. It looked like he had nailed it to make it just an 11-point deficit, and uh, somebody bent that rim because it rolled right off the front lip and came out. Another three-point attempt put up, doesn't go. Olympians come away with it. That was Reed with the three-point attempt. Olympians think about it, they give it out to Kane inside. Kane with the follow gets it to go. It's his first two in the second half. He's got 17 on the night. Makes a nice putback of his own missed shot. Extends the lead to 16. The biggest lead was 21. Palace Verdes had a chance to get it to 14. Couldn't get it to drop. Olympians, though, are blowing absolute layups, Michael. Johnson right down the middle. Couldn't convert. That shot up and in by John Reed. It's now a 14-point ball game. That shot put up and in by Donnell Beverly. Now that's how you run the break. The Peninsula comes right back, beats pressure, gets Reed. So John Reed has been the man to step up for. Anna Kwanze and Clark were both sitting on the bench with fouls. And that's what we said somebody else was going to have to step up. But we knew that this 13 and 6 Peninsula team was too good to run away and quit. Just because they were down by 21, they're now only down by 14 with a chance to cut it to 10 or 12, if not 11. They don't do it on that shot, though. Beverly makes that look so easy. He gets back-to-back -back layups. So Donnell Beverly has been a spark for the Olympians as well as he came in for Chris Jackson. Both teams looking to slow it just a tad, man. I mean, these guys Whew. have been doing a lot of running there. You got to travel there as Donnell Beverly shuffled his feet. And Chris Jackson's coming back here in the third quarter with four fouls, if I'm not mistaken, and a lot of time left in the third, three minutes. Well, Reggie Morris might uh, see something that he wants to run in his offense that they're not executing right now, and he wants to put his leading score back in the game as a 16-point lead. Well, I would expect that he has him in there both for ball handling and defensive pressure. Of course, the defensive pressure will likely get him in trouble. Westbrook attacks the basket, can't get it to go, kicks it over to Jackson, his three. Oh, he looked like he's he cold off the bench on that one. It came up way short. They look inside to Reed. Reed gets it up, doesn't get it to go. But we're going to have a two-shot foul called on the Olympians. They call it on number 21, John Thomas. And 16 fouls for the Olympians, three on Thomas. Reach free throw is good. It's a 15 point game now. It has been as low as 14. Sakwin makes it a 14 point game again. That's as close as they've been able to get here in the third quarter after coming out of the locker room trailing by 21. He's got 10 is the uh, lone Panther from Peninsula in double figures. On the attack to the basket, got to tell you, and that's a makeup foul by Tolliver. Tolliver not expecting the pass, let it get away, tried to make up for that mistake, and almost invariably, you compound one mistake with another. In that case, Tolliver draws a foul, which also puts Peninsula in the one and one situation. So that'll be the 17th foul. The pass surprised him. He took his eye away from the ball. I'm not sure how you can do that when 
you're standing six feet away from him. But then when he lost it, then he reached over, snatched at it, committed the foul. That free throw by Potter is good. Jerome Potter, 5'9", 145 pound senior. Now they're gonna try and close it within 10 before we get to the fourth quarter. Now it's 13. And this is as close as they've been since they got off the bus. Boy, it's an even dozen. They've shaved nine points off of that halftime lead. Johnson's three-pointer, good. Well, he set that up with a great ball fake as if he was gonna throw it down in a corner. The defense sagged back, he was open from three. Losinger now coming back with the pressure defense. And what's most interesting, Michael, is that all of this has taken place with their two big guys on the bench. Now, Losinger still. And going in for the layup is John Thomas. Thomas now with eight points. And that's what's helped Losinger is their bench. He's got eight off the bench. Connie's got wow. 17 off the bench. Gonna call a blocking foul on John Thomas. Boy, Thomas thought he really had established position on that. Thomas gives a sly grin there on Londale Hawthorne's Community Cable Channel 22. Fourth foul on Thomas. So losing it with a lot of guys with four fouls. Of course, they've got a very deep bench. And Donnell Beverly will come on for John Thomas. And Beverly's having a good second half. Scoreless in the first half, five points here in the second. Rebound comes off, but it's taken by Palace Verdes. And now they're gonna get Kane, I think, with a foul on there. And Kane's gonna say, what'd I do? Except for the fact that he tripped over my foot. Well, now we need to, we can get a, okay. Well, we're a second, second late on that one. But there was a discussion between Coach Reggie Morris and the official so Ron now we Blake. have nine team fouls. To go to I the think double that's bonus. one of the things that Coach Morris was pointing That free throw up and in for David Pearson. So well, they're chipping away at the free throw line. They're chipping away, and it's a 15-point game. It's been as been down as low as 12. Kanye's turnaround jumper up and in. Kanye's got what 19 in this game. Nice look, broken up by Chris Jackson. That was. Peterson with a good look on the play. So it's 53-36, back to a 17-point lead. At one point, it was down to 12. Shot clock still in effect, 33 seconds on, on the shot, 21, 21 on the shot, rather. Down to 10 on the shot, 22 on the game. The drive to the basket, get the shot away, can't get it to go. And now Nensler will look for one more score before the quarter's over. They look for a three. Wow. The Connie commits a foul on a three by Peterson, and that's going to send him to the free throw line. Connie picks up his third personal. Double bonus now, 10 team fouls. 
And there you see David Carney on your screen having a game of his life tonight. And it's our pleasure to bring it to you on Lawndale's Community Cable Channel 22. I'm sure his folks will be calling up asking for that tape. So, Tom, you may as well go ahead and get it made. Because in the two years we've watched him, this is Kanye's biggest game. Kanye already has given away a pair. It's a 15-point game now with a chance for it to be 14. That one's short. Well, he made two out of three. Kanye will attempt to answer. Can't get it to go. And so, at the end of three, our score is 53-38. 53-38 on Londale's Community Cable Channel 22. As the Panthers of Peninsula, Michael put together a pretty decent 20-point quarter. Now score them 20 to 14 and a quarter. So they cut six points off of that lead. They've got it within distance, within striking margin. Still a tall, tall order to come back against a team as good as this Olympian team when you're down by 15 to start the fourth. Well, we'll see how long they keep Anna Kwanzi and Bill Clark on the bench. Both post players are out with four personals. Peterson down the stretch makes five straight free throws. Well, I think finishes with 10 I think points. You'll see one, if not both, start the fourth quarter. Uh, you've got to make your run at the start of the quarter. You won't, you, you won't have a chance to make it in the middle. In foul trouble for the Olympians, Chris Jackson, who played the last two minutes with four fouls. John Thomas off the bench has four fouls. And uh, Connie with three has 19 points. So they come back to start the fourth. And so Clark returns to the floor to start the fourth and final period, as does Anna Kwanze. And so Reed goes to the bench for a break. And the attempt to go inside right away, and Loser comes up with the steal. And now we got a carrying the ball call against Donnell Beverly. It's going to give it over to Palace Verdes. Here comes full court pressure. That was effective in that first quarter. And I tell you, that's that's one effective thing when you got it when they want to put it in the hands of a guy like Clark is to make him. Wow. You know. For so many years, I can recall hearing Chick Hearn talk about when the coach or the official is standing right in his viewpoint. I tell you, when they get right there, you can't see a thing. It's like a solar eclipse. They block out everything. There's that's, Reggie Morris saying, him. block about out of rebounds. <laughs> He's on the same wave like you are. <laughs> Clark misses a pair that would have made it a 13-point game. Peninsula, not a good free throw shooting team. Shoots about 67%. Connie's shot from the outside. Way off. But Donnell Beverly in the right place at the right time. Scores on the follow. They get it to Anna Kwanze inside. As we can see, the big man having to play somewhat tentatively. That shot put up from three-point range by Jackson doesn't go. Connie comes up with the steal Blind from, side from Peterson. Peterson. Just picked his pocket clean. I'm that's not sure illegal that's a, in some states. That was a great play. I'm not sure that Coach Morris wants Chris Jackson fired up a 25-footer with over 30 seconds left on the shot clock. Olympia's working on the perimeter. That's Johnson over to Beverly. Over to Roy Walker, where Walker attacks the basket, and they're going to get Donnell Beverly for going over the back, although Coach Morris felt, just as I did, that Beverly simply outleaped the guy in front of him. Yeah, he went right up over the top, got the rebound. 
Didn't look like it was that, uh, it was incidental contact. Beverly now. Two personals. And there's and some a calls. double bonus. Absolutely. Free throw by Yukawa is no good. Yukawa's second attempt doesn't go either. But the rebound taken down by Anna Kwanze, but he was fouled on the play. Boy, and I do believe that they got Roy Walker on Not that foul. In now fact, I have Walker with four. I see the table signaling Coach Morris that that's four on Walker as well. So the Olympians, I think just about every one of their starters has four fouls. Well, they got Chris Jackson with four. Now you got Walker with four. You got Thomas with four. Connie with three. So they've got a lot of people in trouble. Wow, that could have been Anna Kwanze's fifth foul. Scored a basket for Kane. Kane thought he drew a foul. That's yeah, a career night with 21 points. Near turnover, there's Peterson shot from three-point range. Doesn't go, but they come down with the rebound, but the Olympians steal it. Johnson pushing it up. Olympia now Peninsula is coming back and playing at the pace where Losinger wants to play, right up and down the court. And uh, when they made that run at them, they were a little bit more patient than they are right now. And if you've heard me call Peterson seemingly quite often, that's because the brothers Peterson are on this team. Number 22 and 33, Eric and David. I'm gonna gather that they're twins because they're both seniors. And if I recall, their father's Jeff Peterson played baseball for Rod Dato in USC and won a couple of national championships in the early 70s. Olympians still controlling it. Boy, they got a couple of inside looks, couldn't get it to go. And Kwanzaa dribbles it up, was stolen from him. Now, talk by... about picking your pocket, Rufus. <laughs> That's two times the Olympians. He's got your wallet. I tell you, you make sure that my pocket will be buttoned up any time I'm around these guys. Oh, yeah. And I say that jokingly, fans. This is a great oh. group of guys. I've said that before on many occasions. They're a reflection of their coach, Reggie Morris. Guys of great character, and they comport themselves like gentlemen at all times. On the drive to the basket, D'Angelo Johnson with the fake pass to the perimeter, freezes the defender. Go. There's another steal. And we're going to get another layup for D'Angelo Johnson. And I think that'll force a timeout. And, and near another steal by the Olympians. And their coach, Jim Quick, says, I need a timeout to talk things over because now it's a 22-point game just like that at 61-39. And it's exactly what I talked about when that ball went out of bounds. They played in the third quarter at their pace and their style, and then they got caught up with this losing or press and running game and turnovers, and all of a sudden, the Olympians score six straight points and open it back up to 21. And I can tell you, as we look at the top 10 in the Daily Breeze, this Olympian team isn't in there, and, and some might say deservedly so because of their record, but I can tell you, fans, and I hope that this team has the opportunity to make a playoff run because this is as good an 8 and 10 team as you will ever see. Make this it is a, a very good basketball a team. A 22 point lead. And everybody contributes. Everybody, you're right. Olympians.
Scorpions once again pressing all over the floor, and they force a travel by Potter. Well, they've played 10. Well, you don't have to hire them. All you got to do is pay me. <laughs> but here we go. Kanye with the drive. Dishes it off. They can't get it to go. Wow, you're going to get a foul. That'll be the fifth and final foul on Clark. And he knows it. He heads toward the bench. Doesn't need to ask any questions. Puts his head down as, he, as Clark. There he is on your screen. Bill Clark, their best player. Averages 20 around. points a game. He leaves with seven points all in the first half. So, if you're the Olympians, mission accomplished. In terms of getting Clark, he got about four and a half minutes, or nearly four minutes, I should say, a little over three and a half with that fourth foul. Cleveland gives it off to Johnson. Johnson up fakes, takes a dribble, comes up short on the shot. Anna Kwanzaa drives to the basket. Anna Kwanzaa lays it up too hard. David Kane with the crossover. They're running. They got numbers. Kane takes it all the way. Fans, you tonight are witnessing here on January 25th, 2005, the greatest high school game in David Kane's life. 23 points. He wants it. He feels it. Give me the ball. He's going to shoot a three. And I'm glad to see this. I mean, this guy has had a heck of a game. He has put on a show for the fans tonight. I even see some of his teammates with a smile over there. They realize they're watching a, a, a special performance. That even well, Kanye comes up wincing just a little bit. For a second, I thought he was smiling. Boy, and he's at his best when he goes end to end with the dribble. So he's waiting to shoot a couple free throws. Has to shoot a couple. Peninsula doesn't want to put anybody on the line. The officiating crew tells them they have to have two on the line. And in fact, both of them have to be on the low block. And now you're going to have a technical call, I believe, against Peninsula. Well, they're gonna give it to the bench. There's Coach Quick. And I think Coach Quick is asking why the technical. And I must That's admit he Ron Blake discussing it with him. Well, Ron Blake is telling them your players didn't take their position on the floor. And in so many words, I think the other thing that he's saying is that they started lollygagging and got on my nerves. And here goes Connie. Uh, Greg McMullen grabbed him and said, you're going to shoot the tees. Are you going to shoot the free throws before we shoot the tees? He was shot going to the, he was fouled going to the basket, so he's going to shoot his two free throws first. Then we shoot the technicals. We'll see if, we, we'll see if we can get a call. Ron. Converts the first, he's got 24. Ron. What was the T.I.? The opposing team has to take the lower block. Right, okay. that's what we thought. Okay. Exactly, well, just as uh, Rufus right. said, violation on the lane. Both free throws good, giving uh, Connie 25 points. So uh, give us that explanation again. And once again, as we said, the, the requirement is they wanted no one on the lane. Official informed them that they had to put two players down on the low block, one on each side. Uh, and as I said, I think they lollygagged and just got on his nerves with it. It's a delay of game, and he called it technical. But I'm sure he gave, he gave them the full explanation, just as he gave to us. It gives us a chance also to say, Michael, how much we appreciate the way the officials, the, 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 the game officials, as well as representatives from both schools, wherever we go with Hawthorne Lawndale Channel 22 Sports, always cooperate with us. You know, I, I mean, we, we, we couldn't do the job as well as we do 
without the cooperation that we get from everybody associated with these contests. Yeah, and I had a nice conversation with uh, Greg McMullen before tonight's tip-off. He worked that Redondo game that went to overtime, and we had a discussion about some of the plays there. And uh, he's going to try and get a copy of the tape and uh, evaluate his own performance. While we're discussing uh, the technical foul, David Connie hits four straight free throws, gives him 27 high point honors on tonight. That's the biggest a, lead now, 67-39. Well, a 28 point ball game. This one's in the bank for the Olympians with 310 to go. And it looks like Coach Quick has emptied his bench completely. Let's see if we can get a mention for some of these guys. Number 55, Eric Lorick is in for Peninsula along with 41, Michael Butcher, shot clock violation against the Olympians. Now, Eric Lorick is a an offensive tight end, a defensive end, highly touted uh, all CIF player from Peninsula off their football team. He's gonna be a division one tight end or linebacker for someone, and, and maybe he, USC, maybe right. for Pete Carroll. He, puts, and, he gets and, the basket. And if you can see him, if we get a shot of him, you're right, he is a big kid. He's listed at 6'5", 250. I don't know about the 6'5", but I'm positive of the 250. Dunk attempt there by Roy Walker doesn't go. They got Nate Carroll trapped in the corner. Nikawa, another fake by uh, Johnson. D'Angelo hid the ball behind his back. He kept it, then brought it back up and laid it in. So Butcher's also in there, 6'6". Six, six. He's a junior. So, But now they've cleared the bench. Down by 28 points, 208 to go. And we'll see what this does to the standings because uh, it's gonna break things up at the top. Losing her now will go to four and one. Palos Verdes Peninsula drops to three and two. Redondo plays at Maricosta tonight. We'll have to find out the results of that later. Score stands 69-41. Well, you, you know who losing her will be rooting for it, and that one will be rooting for Maricosta, obviously. And I say that for league standing purposes. That's Butcher. That shot put up from the outside by Nate Carroll. Doesn't go. And now we got Solomon T on the floor. Solomon Tuhola Aki. Donnell Beverly with the cross court pass over to Cleveland. A couple of guys in. That shot looked like that was Ryan Nichols with the shot. Should mention that the freshman, Deshaun Freeman, was injured with back trouble, did not play in tonight's contest due to injury. Didn't even dress out for the game. He's got a minute remaining in the contest, fans. 30-point lead for the Olympians. On the drive to the basket was John Barron. Shot put up and in. Should put up, I should say, by Terrell Abernathy. Want to get a mention for Terrell. seconds left 28 is the difference at 71 43 can't even see this side of the floor but the follow put up and in again by Ryan Nichols so we got ourselves a 30 point game now huge win for the Olympians and there's a steal and I think that should close out the scoring as they're instructed to hold it, and they do. So, the final here at the home of the Olympians. The Olympians win it by a score of 73-43 on Lawndale's Community Cable Channel 22.
They opened the fourth with a 15-point lead. They doubled that lead. Great effort tonight for the Olympians, Michael. For Lusinger, after being outscored 20 to 14 in the third quarter, they come back with a fantastic fourth quarter. 20 to five, they outscore Peninsula. Peninsula basically shot their wad. They had nothing left in the fourth quarter. They lost a couple of players on foul trouble, as we see Reggie Morris talking with Jim Quick, congratulating him. But now Lusinger, regardless of what, and there's our leading scorer, David Cunney, with 27 points tonight, caps off a career night here in a big 30-point victory. And now the Olympians, regardless of what Redondo does, they are 4-1, and one, and they can be no worse than in first place. Absolutely. And... But they don't have a lot of time to rest on their laurels because Friday night, right back here at Lou House, the Olympians will be hosting the Mustangs of Miracasa in yet another Top Chef Bay League contest. But the Olympians control this game from the very beginning, Michael. They opened the first, they closed the first period with a 17 point lead, extended it to 21. In the third, Miracosta made, a, not Miracosta, but rather Peninsula made a run. Interesting enough, when the two big guys were on the bench, they got it down to around 12, and all of a sudden, the Olympians exploded on them again. But they came back in the game and ended up fouling out at the midway part of the fourth quarter. David Connie, he set the tone in the first quarter with 15 points of his 27. And that's when they opened up that big lead. It was just insurmountable. Even though Peninsula closed it with a nice run in the third, that 20 to five run in that fourth quarter sealed their victory, their fourth in the Bay League. And again, as you mentioned, and we may as well give him big props because he had the game of a life tonight, David Connie with 27 points. So fans, it was a great effort, a great showing here on Lawndale's Community Cable Channel 22 once again. Of course, as we know, the executive producer, Tom Strick Fadden, the crew tonight, Jose Bravo, Joe Shaw, Andre Sherl, and, and Brad Hill. For my partner sitting next to me, Michael Kennedy, I'm Rufus Washington, said we had a lot of fun tonight as the Olympians win with a final of 73-43. But guess what? We'll be back on Friday night to watch these very same Olympians host the Mustangs of Miracosta. Fans, we know you'll be there. So once again, as we always say, until the next time, we'll see you. Good night.